Shannon, and um, my dad is a Baptist preacher. I grew up in church. I sang hymns. I stood with a piano player, and I wore masks for a long time. I always wondered um, what everyone had that I did not have, um, and not until way on up into age, I'm 26 now. I came to the House of Pearls um, in October, and I was still 45. So I say for 45 years. For a very long time, I ran from the Lord. Um, I knew right from wrong. Um, my, my dad did an excellent job raising me. Um, like, I try to change my testimony a little bit every time because I know these girls get tired of doing the same thing. But um, when I was in high school, my dad realized um, that temptation was starting to get into my life. And I was starting to be one of those rebellious preacher's daughters. So um, he challenged me every day that I had to start reading my Bible. And each night, I would have to tell him what I had learned. Well, of course, I would tell him I had read it, and I had not. So I like to say that I do very well know that in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Because Genesis 1 was about as far as I would make it, I would lie and tell him I had read it. So I had to go back to Genesis, so I read Genesis a lot when I was young. <laughs> <laughs> but throughout all of that, um, I lived um, a pretty normal life, and Lois touched on a big part about addiction being in our lives um, and us not knowing how to deal with it. Um, I talked to, I'll tell you, I'll talk to him a little bit because that's a little bit later, but someone very close to me told me this week that they knew I was an addict before I was an addict. And that hit me so hard because I thought, man, I, I, thought, I thought I was a, a good hider. I thought, I love calling sign closet closet alcoholic. I was, a, I was a closet drug addict, or so I thought, um, and I wasn't. And so when this person told me that, I thought, man, God is so powerful, you know, that um, he just has lined all these things up in my life. But um, I used to work, um, I'm from Avalon, North Carolina, which is about 30 miles east of Charlotte. And I had about a 10, 12 year career in the orthopedic industry. I worked for a prominent doctor's um, office in Charlotte. And um, I played adult softball there. Um, up until this time in my life, which was about in the 30s, um, I had never dabbled with drugs, but I ran for the Lord. I was not living um, a life for the Lord. I was living a life for myself. Um, I stored up my treasures on earth instead of in heaven, and I felt that I had to have the nicest things and had to hang out with the nicest people um, and just had to have something going on all the time. And I thought because, because I was doing these things and my children had the best of the best, I thought I was doing what I should have been doing, but I was not. Um, House of Pearls has really taught me what living for the Lord is instead of living for yourself. And I'll be forever grateful because this ministry feel that. And it's crazy because it's things I've knew my whole life. It's things I've been told my whole life. But it took a stranger stepping in front of me and saying, you need help. And there's help out there. And I think I knew that there was help out there. But the step of taking the help, receiving the help, <coughs> is a very, very hard step to make. And my father always asked me, I do not understand why you do drugs. I do not understand it. And unless you've been there, which I pray you don't, um, it, it, it's, it's unexplainable. Um, there's no excuses for it because I do believe that this book right here that I love so much tells me how to live life. It tells me what I need for life. It tells me the tools I need for life. It tells me how um, in Ecclesiastes it promises me that there is a time for everything, that God will get me through all of those times. I do not need the world. I do not need what the world offers. Um, but this program has really taught me that. And I just, again, can never say how grateful that I will be to this program. But throughout my life, um, I started the way I became a drug addict. Um, I played softball and I tore my meniscus in my knees. I had surgery and I got introduced to pain pills. And um, one would make the pain ease off. Two would make the pain go a little better. Well, four would make it completely go away. And I fastly learned that my body um, was very um, susceptible to becoming addicted. Um, that became very expensive. Um, I started calling in pills for myself because my prescription would run out. And I thought, well, this is what I do at my job anyway, so it's okay. I was calling in for myself. And I will tell you that that costed me a lot. Um, I've never had a speed ticket in my life, but I did go to prison. I went to prison for calling in pain pills for myself and for others. Um, along with that addiction of pain pills came um, the, the thing that I learned, the love of money. Other people like pills and they're paying me to do that, and I did. 
So I went to prison, and you would think I would have learned by that, that trip um, to not do those things again. When I come home from prison, I was very shameful. I was so full of shame. Um, my dad's a pastor. It's a small town, so as you can imagine, um, it didn't. It did bother me what people said about me. I'm not gonna lie. It did bother me what people said about me, but it hurt my heart what people said about my dad um, because he did all he could do. Um, my addiction was not a result of his actions or of his lack of. Um, my addictions were my choices. They were the sin choices that I chose, choose to, chose to make, not my father. So it bothered me and hurt me very deeply um, what people would say about my dad and what must have happened in our house and how could he leave a church when Shannon was a drug addict. And that, that really hit me hard. And I let the devil play that in my mind every single day. Um, and I have since learned that the devil only has the power we give him, and I gave him way too much power during those times of my life. Um, I wallowed in self-pity for that, and therefore um, I found that I'll just go take a pill and I'll feel better. And if I take two, I'm going to feel even better. That led to my heroin addiction because, unfortunately, um, I found out that heroin was cheaper than pills and would last longer. It is a very deadly and a very dangerous drug. And my heart hurts for people that I know, um, for friends that I have back home um, that I, I, I pray about that can become free, like God set me free. Um, but it is very powerful. And if you do not have addiction in your family or anyone you know and yourself has not been addicted, you are very lucky and very blessed um, because it is out here. Um, I moved to Lancaster in February with House of Pearls. And the first time Lois asked me about moving, I said no because I was comfortable. I had been at House of Pearls um, about three months, and I knew that they were opening this house. And when I first uh, applied to the program, Lois accepted me, then I changed my mind and said, no, I'm not going because I wasn't going anywhere for a year. Not <laughs> happening. That's too long. I got too much to do, which was nothing. But I, I can't go. I was not going to give myself um, to the program for a year. A little bit, I know I wasn't giving myself to the program. I was giving myself to the Lord. Yeah. And a year is not even enough. I tell her all the time, I don't know what she's going to do when I graduate because I'm not leaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I told her no. And I really feel that that is the first time since fully submitting myself to the Lord that I felt conviction. I walked out of her office and about fell. Like literally, I about fell. My, my heart hit my toes and I felt like I felt when I got saved. <clears throat> and I feel like God was telling me, how dare you? You know, all I've done for you. And I know Dolores would not ask us to do anything that she has not prayed about, that God has not led her um, to ask us or to do. And so I went back in and I said, you know, Dolores, I'm sorry. You know, I said, I feel like Jonah. <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> and I've run my whole life and that's what I knew. And so um, she helped me with the Bible, you know, that God doesn't call us to be comfortable. You know, and if I'm comfortable, I'm not, I'm not helping anyone. I'm just getting back in the help of myself. And so I moved to Lancaster in February, and it um, is the greatest thing I've ever done. I pray that um, God will open doors here for me when I graduate to stay in this area. Um, I met Jenny at our chain breakers meeting, and she is amazing. And if you have not been to Janelle's and met Jenny, I suggest you go because she <laughs> is a light. Um, I've learned so much from Jenny and from Kelly um, about parents of addicts. I did not realize how bad I hurt my family. I didn't wake up every day and say, today I'm going to be a drug addict, and today I'm going to break my dad's heart. It's never been on my mind. But I did that over and over and over again. And so those meetings are just so important um, for parents. And when I met Kelly um, at our chain breakers meeting, she was praying for her, her daughter. And um, through, through the midst of in, in October of last year, I finally listened to someone who said, you need help. And I said, okay, you know, I need help. It was like a light switch went off. They were like, you need help. And I'm like, I need help. I do. <laughs> You're right. I need help. And so um, they set me up with a pastor who then in turn set me up with Lois. And that's just living proof of how God set, puts everyone in your place. God knows what he is doing. I will argue with anyone who wants to argue that the Lord knows what he is doing because I can give you example after example after example after example. And um, so I came to House of Pearls with this meeting. I met Kelly. She's praying for her daughter. When I reached out to my dad to tell my dad that I needed help, my dad has been the one constant person in my life. He's always been by my side. 
I could call him even in my addiction, and I would have to hear a lecture, and I would have to hear the disappointment, but I knew he would, he would talk to me. That's all I needed. I just needed that little bit of, I'm, I'm okay, my dad still loves me, I'm all right. Well, when I called my dad to tell him that I learned about House of Pearls and I was gonna go and seek help, um, he hung up on me. Um, I didn't even get to tell him that I was asking for help. I didn't get to say anything to him. He just straight hung the phone up on me. And I like to let people know that that is, was the hardest moment to this day of my life, but the best moment of my mm. life. Because God allowed my father to hang up on me so that I would stop reaching for man and reach for the Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh. I was by myself. I had nothing. I had no one. No one in my family spoke to me. My mother hadn't spoke to me in 10 years. My kids hadn't spoke to me in two years. My father was always there. And when I realized my dad was not there, I realized I need help. So when I met Kelly, she was praying. She, every time I seen her, her and her husband, they prayed for her only for mercy. They just prayed, prayed, prayed. And I thought, God, I thank you for letting me see that. So I know that's what my dad does for me. I know that's what my dad does for me. And a praise report on that, their daughter is in house. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> She's young, and it's if I can do anything in this world, um, I, I love the song. I don't want to leave, leave a legacy. I don't care if they remember me, but only Jesus. Amen. So if I can do one thing out of my life, and it is to swallow my pride, um, the shame that I used to live in, and stand up in front of people and tell people that I used to be a drug addict, but then also tell them what the Lord has done for me, I will do it anytime, any place, anywhere, because God is so powerful. And I always try to um, give a scripture when I do speak. Um, I could read this whole Bible class today, but I won't read the whole Bible today. <laughs> um, it's amazing because um, the lady that read the poem a minute ago about someone prayed for me. So I pray when I find when I speak, I pray and I ask God, please help me. Just give me the word. Don't let me babble on about sin and glorify sin because that's not what I'm here to do. I'm here to tell you about how I relate to God's word and how his word speaks to me and has changed my life. So I prayed last night, and it's so amazing because that poem lines up with, <laughs> it's a God moment. You know, God gives us all the assurance we need. God gives us the, you know, lots of people say, well, how do you believe in God? You can't see him. Well, God just spoke to me through that prayer because I wrote the exact same thing on this paper <laughs> last night. So, um, but in 2 Kings um, chapter 6, verses 15 through 17, it says, when the servant from the man of God got up early the next morning and went outside. There were troops, horses, and chariots everywhere. Oh, sir, what will we do now? The young man cried to Elisha. Don't be afraid, Elisha told them, for there are more on our side than on theirs. Then Elisha prayed, Oh, Lord, open his eyes and let him see. The Lord opened the young man's eyes, and when he looked up, he saw that the hillside around Elisha was filled with horses and chariots of fire. I would like for you to know that just as that point said, in the battles and in the midst of the battles in my life, someone somewhere prayed for me. Mm. Yep. Amen. Someone prayed for my eyes to be open to the goodness of God. And I'm so thankful that someone prayed for me because here I am and I'm no longer a broken, bitter, angry, hateful person who does not want to get up at 555. I wake up at 5.55 now and say, thank you, God. Amen. Thank you for uh, the roof over my head. And just like Elisha's servant, God's opened my eyes to all the people around me that God has put in my life. Um, God has put the lowest in my life, and I like to always tell her, I'm so glad that God's plan for her life included her to save mine. Mm. Because without being a servant for the Lord, um, there's just... You want to glorify God. You want to serve God. You want to do everything that God calls you to do. And not to be boastful about the Lois, but to be boastful about her works for the Lord. I can't wait to see what your house looks like in heaven because I'm coming over. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then um, I just want to say that there's another thing that I've learned that's just been heavy on my heart the past week um, because throughout the battles in my life, um, I told y'all I'm not. My mother has not spoken to me throughout my addiction. Um, my mother and I have always had a strange relationship, um, but um, I prayed a lot for 
myself to forgive her and um, pray that she would forgive me. And I think that I did that for a long time, not sincerely, um, because I did not um, have any fruits from those prayers. Um, and House of Pearls, what Lois said, being a discipleship program, it is a discipleship program. It's exactly what it is. I learned so much through our studies of things that if I just do this, what this says, it works. And it's like, it's so simple. I'm the one that makes it complicated, mm. you know? And so um, I fully pray to the Lord um, about my children um, talking to me. They haven't talked to me in a couple years. And, you know, God just laid on my heart, you haven't forgiven your mother. How can they forgive theirs? Why wow. should I reward you, Shane, mm. with a relationship with your children when you won't even forgive your own mother? Come on. And so um, I just thank and praise this program because through learning that and in studies of forgiveness especially, um, I have truly forgiven my mother. And um, our pastor in our ministry told me that you know, or told us, you know that we've truly forgiven someone when you can pray for them and you mean it. Mm -hmm. When you pray for someone and you really mean it, you're not just doing it because that's what God wants you to do, that's what the preacher told me to do, that's what the Bible told you to do, that you are sincerely doing it. I sincerely submitted my relationship with my mother to the Lord, and I said, God, I pray for her. And I would be alive if I didn't say I need my mother, no matter what she did when she was younger. Um, you know, I've done things in my past, and I pray that my kids will forgive me. And so this past week, I've been talking to my mother. <laughs> and God, yeah. God's done so many things in your life, Shannon, that how can you not boast about him? And a wise lady named Misty, who is our night and weekend manager at our Winget house, taught me one of the first Bible scriptures, the Bible verses that I ever remembered. And it's Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight your battles for you. Mm -hmm. Just be still. That's right. And I thank you, Misty. I thank all of these women in my lives, um, the women before me and the women after me, we all play such an intricate role because we're all believers. We are to be set apart from others, but we are to carry each other's burdens. And I thank you for listening to me like you have and for always saying, Exodus 14, 14, Exodus 14, 14. <laughs> <laughs> because he does. Um, all you have to do is give it to him. And it's, yep. it's amazing that it's that simple, but yet so hard because we want to hold on. We want to hold on to that control. And like I said, for the first time ever in my life, um, I'm in control of nothing, and I love it. I love it. It's so free. Um, I asked Lois yesterday, I said, did you decide if you wanted me to speak at that church tomorrow or not? And she was like, yeah. And I'm like, okay. Well, if you would have asked me that two years ago, I'd be like, ah, I have to plan. I have to know. You know, but I realized all I need is just a little bit of time to talk about it. That's all I need. That's and right. And God's going to do miracles in my life as he just continues to do. Um, but I encourage you that... Um, if you would, please um, contribute to the House of Pearls, and I don't mean money. Prayers. Prayers are so powerful because as that poem says, someone prayed for me. And I just like that you can put a face with it because there's all kinds of ways that you can donate your money and your time. There's these international organizations, and I'm not knocking any of them, but I just personally am drawn. You can put a face with what you're helping. You can put a face with a prayer. And I just would like, you know, these beautiful ladies over here, when you pray for us, these are what you pray for. And I'll close on, um, there was a song growing up when I was young that my dad played at church all the time, it's by Ray Bolt. And it's called, Thank You for Giving to the Lord mm -hmm. for I and a Life That Was Changed. Amen. So,